UFC. The world leader in MMA. Experience it on FS1. Hello, Sweden. Legendary Nordic warriors known as the Vikings once roamed these lands, but this weekend it'll host a new breed of iconic fighter as the UFC octagon descends upon one of Northern Europe's largest and most beautiful cities. And there's the country's greatest fighting son, number one light heavyweight Alexander Gustafsson and his opponent, second ranked 205 pounder Glover Teixeira. Both veterans have their sights set on another title shot. The FS1 UFC Fight Night weigh-in show starts now. Tomorrow they fight, today they weigh in. Good morning everyone, Todd Grisham here with a pair of bright-eyed and bushy-tailed analysts on the West Coast. Reigning, defending, middleweight champion Michael Bisping and the former Strike Force King Gilbert Melendez on the end. We'll talk to them in a moment. For now, you just have to look at them. And we're going old school with the weigh-in format today. For more on that, we go across the pond to Megan Olivi. Thank you so much, Todd. In June of 2016, the UFC implemented their morning official weigh-in, followed by an afternoon ceremonial weigh-in, which has pretty much been standard procedure on almost every card since then. However, things will be different here in Stockholm. Fighters will officially weigh in at 3 p.m. local time right here in the arena. The reason being there's a Swedish law saying there's a maximum of 32 hours between the official weigh-in and the start of an MMA competition, therefore eliminating the option of having that morning weigh-in. Fighters were notified when they checked in this week in Stockholm, so they would have the week to prepare and plan to make weight in just a few minutes right here in Stockholm. Todd, back to you. More from Megan momentarily, but gentlemen, let's jump right into the main event. Second ranked Glover Teixeira taking on the top ranked middleweight in the world, light heavyweight in the world, Alexander Gustafsson. Let's start with the big Swede, Mike. Yeah, Gustafsson's been around forever, it feels like, and he's fought the best of the best, including the two best light heavyweights of all time, John Jones and DC, both times for the belt. Yes, he lost, but they were close fights. I even thought that he beat John Jones back in the day, and of course, he's taking on Glover to share. This man is no stranger either. Knockout power, BJJ, black belt, been around forever. Excellent main event. Oh, this is an excellent main event, I have to agree. Alexander has great striking, and so does Glover to share. They're both boxers. One likes to stay in the pocket more, and Alexander likes to be elusive. Both great takedown artists. Look for the double leg from Alexander and look for the single leg slag from Glover. If they're on the ground, it's whoever goes to their back first is going to have the disadvantage in the grappling. All right. For more on the way, and we send it to the master of ceremony, Dan Hardy, making the trip over to Stockholm. Take it away. All right, let's get this thing rolling. Welcome on stage the beautiful Octagon girls, Carly and Luciana. We also have Mick Maynard, VP of Talent Relations. Joe Carr, Senior VP of International Affairs. Are you ready to get this started? Please make some noise for these fighters. First up in the lightweight division, Marcin Hell versus Damir Hatsovic. Welcome to the stage, Damir Hatsovic. Damir here walking out. Looking very happy to be there. He calls himself the Bosnian Bomber. Obviously comes from Bosnia. <laughs> Record of 10 and 3. Four first round finishes. Five wins by KO. Hence the name Bobby and Bobber. Every time you call yourself a Bobber, you've got to be a knockout artist. Look in the crowd a little bit, why not? Hold on. 156. 156 for Damir Atzevich. His opponent in the red corner, Marcin, Polish prodigy, hell! Marcin is a Polish mixed martial artist. He specializes in submission fighting. He's looking for his first UC win. He's lost two, but against UC veterans, Diego Sanchez and Joe Lazan. If you fight, saw his fight with Joe, it was a split decision. A great fight, back and forth action. Great grappling, great striking. This is the real way in, ladies and gentlemen. Nothing ceremonial about it. Do you like this way, Gilbert? 
Well, 32 hours doesn't sound bad to have to hydrate, prepare, to get ready for a fight. This is what, what, what I was going to say. You think they'd be in more of a rush because the faster you get on the scale and get up, the faster you can get that drink, the faster you can start hydrating because trust me, this is the worst day of your life. Every time you do it, it's the worst day of your life. It, it is never fun. What's the most water or energy drink you've pounded after you've gotten on a scale? Have you done a gallon before? I don't know if I've done a gallon. That's a, that's a lot to drink on a stage, but typically for me, when I, when I start Next up in the Watsaway Division, the feature battle of the preliminary con, Darren Till versus Yesin Ayari in the blue corner. Yesin Ayari! Purple belt Yesin Ayari knows he's facing a very skilled striker and opponent, Darren Till. In order to feel fully comfortable for a possible battle on the feet, he started sparring a lot of kickboxing, as many as 16 rounds in a single practice. So he's made weight nicely there. And his opponent in the red corner, Darren Till. Now a little bird is telling me that Darren Till, possibility he might not make weight here. An hour before the weigh-ins, I heard he was still five pounds over. So this is going to be interesting. I think looking at his body language, he looks, I don't know, he doesn't look excited to step on there, but you never know. Maybe he did it. One seven six for Darren Till. Oh, he forfeit 20% of his opponent. One seven six. That's a full six pounds over, man. You know, I heard he was five pounds over. I think he realized he wasn't going to make weight. Rehydrated a little bit. Um, he's going to have to give 20% of his purse to his opponent. That always sucks. Darren's a great fighter. A lot of potential. Definitely needs to take care of this, though. I always say it. And the first fight on the preliminary card in the welterweight division, Nico Masoki versus Boyan Belichkovic. Welcome to the stage, Boyan Serbian Steel Belichkovic. Bohan Belezkovic here, not the easiest word to say at this time in the morning. He's uh, like a lot of Russian people, excellent <laughs> background in Sir, uh, Sambo. His record of 14 and four, uh, four, six first round finishes, eight wins by submission. 170, 170 for Boyan Belezkovic. There we go. And Got his it. opponent in the red corner, Nico Musoki. Nico stepping on the scale for the first time in almost two and a half years. Hasn't stepped in the octagon since January 2015. He's a local boy. I think he dusted off the gloves to come back and put on a show for his peeps out here. Two-time Swedish national amateur wrestling champion. Spend uh, his training camp at TriStar in Montreal, Canada this year. You know, being a Swedish wrestling champion is like being... It's on par with being a British wrestling champion, you know. It means you're really good. Like being the Jamaican bobsled team. Yeah, exactly, kind of. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm having to stop it. One, seven, one. We're well, getting better. 71 for Stockholm's own, Nico Musoki. Silver. Next up in the lightweight division, Reza Matani versus Joaquin Silva. In the blue corner, Joaquin Neto BJJ Silva. Joaquin Silva is coming off a 34 second KO against Andrew Holbrook. His specialty is boxing. Even though he's a BJJ black belt, he says his specialty is boxing. If you saw him fight Andrew Holbrook, it was beautiful. He caught a front kick. Held it for a few seconds, threw it in the air, Holbrook fell to the ground, and he was patient. As he stood up, he landed a mean right hook, and then grounded and pounded him. This guy's a fit fighter. Yeah, he looks in great shape. 156 for Joaquin Silva. And in the red corner, Reza Matt Dog Matani. 
Iranian-born mad dog Rezin Madadi is fighting here in Stockholm on very late notice, but as a resident of the city, he couldn't be happier. He's hoping to get his hand raised here in his adopted home city, and it might be his final fight as he's contemplating retirement. They call him Mad Dog. I think that's a suitable nickname for this guy. He certainly fights like that. Very, very aggressive every time he's in there. Give me away, do you know? 156. 156 for the Mad Dog! Bit of a Red Mad Dog in real life, by all the time. Whoa! Oh, see, there we go. Every time we fight at home, which is my dad is, he's from Sweden, it always brings that extra emotion, you know, extra adrenaline Next rush. Next up in the middleweight division, the Trevor the Smith crowd. versus Chris Camozzi. First to the stage in the blue corner, Chris Camozzi. Well, Camozzi has been around for a long, long time now. Uh, fought a lot of the best guys in the division, but really coming into this one, he's kind of in a tough position. As I say, he's fought some of the greatest fighters out there. He's lost his last two, so he's going to be feeling the pressure coming into this one. Always comes in great shape, very well-rounded. 186. 186 for Chris Camozzi. Oh, great, no problem. Doesn't look too sharp. And his in. opponent in the red corner, Trevor Hot Sauce Smith. With nine first-round finishes to his name, Washington's Trevor Smith makes his octagon return against Chris Camozzi, an opponent he's been expecting to face for quite a while now. In terms of his game plan, he wants to use his striking to set up his takedowns and finish on the canvas. One eighty-six. One eighty-six for Trevor Hot Sauce Smith. You know why they call him hot sauce? I have no idea. Because he loves hot sauce on everything. Is that why he calls himself hot sauce? Ice cream, burritos, you name it. Okay. And the feature bout of the preliminary card in the back to weight division, Pedro Munoz versus Damien Stasiak. First to the stage, Damien Webster Stasiak. Damian Webster Stajak was just a young kid when he started karate class and his coach realized it was small but strong and gave him the nickname Webster after the American sitcom. The name just kind of stuck and has followed him throughout his career. Pedro Munoz is a Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu black belt with a 13-2 record. This is a fun bantamweight to watch. Most guys in the bantamweight division, they use the whole cage, but this guy just pushes forward. He's a very active fighter. If you've seen his last two fights, he won by submission, way of guillotine choke. Look for him to use the guillotine choke as an offensive move and to counter takedowns in this upcoming fight. for Pedro Munoz. We've got two very good grapplers here. Stash out uh, really impressed me with an armbar that he got over David Grant back in Manchester last October. Yeah, I think these are two bantamweights we're going to see they are going to meet in the center, and that's, that's not normal all the time. Welcome back to our Los Angeles studios. We're ready for the weigh-in, to weigh in the fighters on the six-fight main card, which you can see tomorrow on FS1. First up, middleweights, Jack Hermanson and Alex Nicholson. Champ, tell us about the black belt in Taekwondo. Yeah, Alex Nicholson has fought at heavyweight, light heavyweight, finally now found, found a home down at middleweight. He's very tall for that weight class, six foot four. Fights out of Florida, calls himself the Spartan. I wonder if that's because he has a beard like Gerard Butler in 300. Who knows? But uh, a lot of fun to watch this guy fight. Throws a lot of spinning attacks. Um, yeah, a lot of fun. Brings it each and every time. Surprised they didn't ask him to trim his beard a little bit. 
I know they've done that with Johnny Hendricks. 185. 185 for the Spartan, Alex Nicholson. That is a beer. He does look like and his opponent in the red corner. Spartan. Jack the Joker Hamadson. Jack the wow. Joker has won nine of his last ten fights. Though he's won one in the UFC, he's a very active 185 pounder. Moves around in the octagon, uses his push kicks, uses his strikes, and sets a high pace. Jack the Joker, more like Jack the Psychopath. <laughs> Look at this guy. Look at him trying to get all of Scandinavia by wearing the Norwegian and, <laughs> and Swedish flag. Wait, he's a true Viking. Yeah. yeah. It comes it everywhere. 186 for the Joker, Jack Hamadsson. Oh, there we go. I am yes, Sparta. He is. <laughs> well, he's got the good six pack going. Oh, yeah. Oh, this is going to be a good fight. Oh, Next up in the oh. World to Weight division Oliver Enkamp versus Nordin Taleb. First in the blue corner, Nordin Taleb. Yeah, Nordin Taleb was a contestant on Tough Nations Canada and really caught my attention when he knocked out Eric Silva. Of course, Eric Silva has been around forever and fantastic striker, but Nordin beat him to the punch, beat him to the kick. Just a, a very, very skilled fighter. So, uh, excellent addition to the UFC roster. You were just in Thailand, I know, shooting the movie. He's been in Thailand several times. He's a great Muay Thai fighter. Yeah, that's right. He was out there at the start of the year just trying to polish up his skill set out there. Great place to go. You know, of course, you've got to tweak the techniques that you learn in Thailand a little bit to make them applicable to mixed martial arts, of, of course, the footwork, and Thai boxing, and MMA is very, very different, but still, excellent place to go and polish up your striking. 170. 170 for Nordin Taleb. And his opponent in the red corner making his UFC debut, Oliver, the future, and come. The saying, right place, right time, certainly rings true for Stockholm's Oliver Enkamp, who is undefeated at 7-0 with five of those victories coming via finish. He has been training in order to prepare for that UFC call, and when the matchmakers rang his phone, he was ready to accept. Yeah, it's got to be pretty cool to make your UFC debut in your home city. But a lot of pressure, too. A, a lot of pressure, of course. For a debut. Don't look nervous. I was just going to say, seems to be taking his And staying in the welterweight division, Abdul Razak Al Hassan versus Omari Akhmadov. First up in the blue corner, Omari Wolverine Akhmadov. Omari Akhmadov, born in Dagestan, Russia. He's a black belt in Sambo, Russian pancreation champ, coming off a big win over Kyle Newt. I would say per capita, Dagestan has the toughest men on the planet. I would have to say that they're breeding them out there. They're coming out of Dagestan, all the tough guys right now. All well-rounded mixed martial artists. Got the Russian Sambo, the wrestling, the striking. 171. 171 for <laughs> Bald heads. <laughs> And his opponent in the red corner, Abdul Rizak Al Hassan. Judo Thunder Abdul Razak Al Hassan moved to the United States from his native Ghana in order to step up his judo training. He sort of fell into MMA and it was a natural fit. He is undefeated with his longest fight going a whopping 86 seconds. I think that's three votes later. And in the welterweight division, Peter Zabota versus Ben Saunders. First up in the blue corner, Ben Killer B Saunders. 
And Ben Saunders is another guy that's been around for a long time with a very, very good skill set. Excellent Muay Thai clean, very, very good knees and elbows. But it's on the ground that you've really got to watch for this guy. Trains very closely with Eddie Bravo. He's a BJJ, 10th uh, planet black belt in Jiu Jitsu. So if this guy hits the floor, which is an opponent, has a, a fondness for doing so, for taking people down. He's got to be careful because Ben's got those long legs. And of course, Eddie Bravo mastered up the rubber guard. Got to be careful on the floor with this guy. But you got to, got to be careful on the feet as well. 168. 168 for Ben Saunders. And his opponent in the red corner, Peter Sobota. Born in Poland and raised in Germany, Peter Sobota might surprise a lot of people when he walks to the octagon in a Jamaican fight kit. That's because he couldn't choose between the two nations that helped mold him, so he chose Jamaica because of he and his father's love for reggae music. Waiting for a reggae joke, Michael. I saw the hamster wheel spin yeah, around no, right there. Yeah, no, I'm trying to figure out all I can do is uh, do that Representing Jamaica for his love of reggae. Every, everything's going to be all right. You were just dying to say <laughs> Well, I wasn't going to go with no woman, no cry. Moving on but... to the co-main event <laughs> in the light heavyweight division. Volkan Ustamir versus Misha Sokunov. First up in the blue corner, Misha Sokunov. This guy is absolutely huge for my head weight. He's so strong, so powerful. He can knock people out with either his punches and his neck cranks, his finishes are just devastating to watch. It was actually against Alex Nicholson, who's on the card earlier. He went for a rear naked choke, got behind him and just cranked his jaw. Snapped his jaw, dislocated the jaw. This guy is a beast. 206. 206 for Misha Sukunov. As always, looks in fantastic shape. And his opponent in the red corner, Volkan Ustamir. Volkan looks pumped up all the way to the scale here. Had a great first fight against OSP. If you guys saw this, this was definitely fight of the night. Such an aggressive fighter, does a barrage of punches. So comfortable in the chaos. Trained with Henry Hoof, Rumble Johnson striking coach. 206. 206 for Volkan Ustamir. Big. He's a big old boy as well. Now let's take a look at the two men involved in the main event of the evening. If you want something, you're not going to quit. I still believe that I can be a champion. I'm just going to keep fighting, keep training. I live in Stockholm and Swedish people are very disciplined, tough people. When we decided to do something, we really make sure we successfully get there. We're fighters in our DNA. Alexander Gustafsson has had some incredible fights inside the octagon, but perhaps his finest performance was against John Jones for the UFC light heavyweight title. I've been asking for a golf fight for a long time, and I finally got that golf fight I've been looking for. Hats off to Alexander. That was by far my toughest fight. His next title challenge against Daniel Cormier was a similar fight, a very, very close fight where he pushed the champion to the limit. Thank you, Alexander Gustafsson. You made me a better man and fighter tonight. I will forever be indebted to you. I know I can beat the world champion. I know I can beat DC. I know I can beat John Jones. I have to learn from my fights, and from that we just keep working, keep moving forward, and looking to the top. My focus is on Glover now, and after that I want to take that belt. Nice. Alexander Gustafsson is going to have to deal with the boxing and submission ability of Glover Teixeira. I can beat anyone right now. I have advantage in the stuff, so I'm definitely on the ground in wrestling. Maybe stand up to it. Anthony Johnson did hit him. I can hit him too. I'm the fastest guy in the light heavyweight division. No matter if it's the first or the fifth round, I still move. I just put the pace on. I'm ready to battle and I'm ready to take that win. I know if I catch the guys, I can knock him out. It's gonna go wrong for him again. I see myself winning. When I train, when I eat, when I sleep, I'm gonna seek and destroy. Ladies and gentlemen, in the blue corner, Glover Teixeira! Glover Teixeira, a veteran in the sport with a 26-5 record. 
beat Rampage Jackson, KO'd Ryan Bader, sub subbed OSP, and KO'd Rashad Evans. This guy has quite a resume, and he's one win away from possibly getting a title shot. Yeah, he came into the UFC with so much hype. I remember Joe Rogan talking about how he was Chuck Liddell's main training partner. 206. 206 for Glover Teixeira. Stopped him from actually getting to the US. And in the area. red corner, make some noise. Stockholm zone. Alexander the Mauler. Gustafsson. Well, this man really is the face of MMA and the UFC in Sweden. They love him out there. Of course, he's returning after his last fight there was a loss to Anthony Johnson. So a lot of pressure for Gustafsson coming into this one. And I'm sure he'd have it no other way. Been in there with the best. John Jones, DC, as I said, gave them both incredibly tough fights. This guy's right there. If he, if he wins this fight, possibly a title shot very soon. 205. 205 for the Mauler, Alexander Gustafsson. There's that high difference. Reach difference. That could be a big factor in this okay, fight. Okay, let's take a quick question with Glover. Obviously, there's a lot of support here for Alex. How's your journey over to Stockholm been, and how are these wonderful fans treating you before this fight? Hey, man, I have not about respect for this guy, and uh, you know, I wouldn't come to this country if this country was going against him. Of course, you know, uh, but you know, tomorrow night is my night. I come here to do a job, and my job is to finish this guy. Excellent. Good luck tomorrow night. Glover to Shearer, ladies and gentlemen. Alex, it's been a busy few weeks for you. That's my body and silver. First of all, congratulations on the birth of your daughter. That must be amazing. What does it mean to be fighting in Stockholm in front of these fans, and how are you preparing to fight Glover tomorrow night? It feels so great to be back home. It's an highlight in my career every time. From the support and everything, I'm feeling fine. Stockholm and Rio do! No! Good luck tomorrow night. Ladies and gentlemen, Alex de Mola Gustafsson. Thank you for joining us. Get out to well, the Well, things have already you. started to heat up in Stockholm. How about Madadi and Silva about to go at it on stage? They'll set the pace for tomorrow's action. You know, keep it right here, though, folks. You know, Vikings, they're known for pillaging foreign lands. But Alexander Gustafsson looks to dominate on home soil. We'll discuss the main event on FS1 when we return.